Um, so we're here this afternoon at the Romford Film Festival. We have recently, I say recently because there were some other films after it, seen Toby. Um, and uh, it created uh, a lot of laughs. So congratulations. It's really, really hard to deliver uh, good comedy in independent film. How did uh, Toby come to be? Um, so Toby came to be... <coughs> Pardon me. Toby came to be in uh, my creative partner, Lee Wardell's head. Uh, so he's the writer. Uh, probably about 10 years ago, um, at least a ways back. Um, and in the original idea, um, Toby actually didn't have a head. So it should be noted for context, he has a gigantic uh, pinky purple head with buttons for eyes. Uh, but in this original version, yeah, it was literally just a shirt and just nothing above it. Uh, the idea being, literally, what could anyone see in this man to like? Okay. And um, so, ten years ago, the idea came up. Mm. Why did it take so long to get from there to now? Uh, so, I describe Lee as, like, he's just a trove of ideas. He's a, he's a pure creative in the way that he's just constantly firing and cut in his head and coming up with all of this, all of this stuff. Uh, and uh, we started working together... Uh, about four or five years ago and it was just when we met that we started entertaining one another's ideas an awful lot uh, and uh, we realised we had the same sensibilities uh, and we were like well why don't we just do it why don't we actually just make one of these so we've, we've, we've made you know, two films together so far um, we have Pounds for Piggies uh, which I would ch go and check that out that's online at uh, okay. professorstamen.com uh, and this uh, Toby is the second one but they are both products of uh, Lee Wardell's mind from way back when and uh, we've got plenty more <laughs> where that came from Talking about products of mind what I thought was really really clever was the sound cuts so the cuts are like really abrasive um, there's that scene where um, he just in his head he's playing back Toby in the bar and you've got those really really kind of like chop 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 um, that is a masterstroke because it it, it, it it you know it's quite jarring in your head that was something that wasn't planned in okay. the shoot uh, that was something that came up in the edit yeah it was when you were editing yeah it was um, we, uh, we we realized that we needed to draw more of a wedge or drive more of a wedge sorry between Josh and Toby in the film we needed to add more alienation so there was this process in one edit where I was literally going back and I was looking through all of the b-roll and everything that we had to just make this play more and more on Josh's mind psychologically mm -hmm. so I think the earlier cuts were more naturalistic they were more literal in terms of what was happening from A to B mm -hmm. and then there was this process where it was just layering on the sort of psychological turmoil mm -hmm. and that came around the time when I was working with Dave Robbins who did the sound as well because we were just like how can we get it there like how, you know, how can you just add that alienation a little bit more okay. Josh yeah, I was gonna say. I think when we when we first or when you were first editing it, um, when we were getting feedback from some people who'd been in it, but also some people who, who um, are just you know good soundboards for feedback, and there was a little bit of um, <coughs> we wanted to really show um, how affected the character is getting, mm. and uh, without that, um, that's something that was missing. And I think um, I think you're right. I think it's a really good bit to watch because of you know, the abrasive cuts, but I think it's really key in, in getting that message across. And yeah, I think it was get from the feedback from people and yeah, I agree, I think it was a master stroke. How difficult is that to try and create a character that people instantly feel sympathy for? Like, people mm. feel, s I, I think you probably feel sorry for your character within the first two minutes of your encounter with Toby. Oh, great, that's good, thank you. Um, yeah, I think I just played on the idea that, um, th well, my interpretation of it, I think um, speaking to lots of people, there are loads of different, we've heard loads of different ideas and obviously it's open to whatever people want it to be. But for me, it was um, very much like, yeah, that situation where um, a friend is talking about someone they know and they just big them up massively. They say they're really funny, um, just like a great guy or the great girl or whoever. And then when you meet them, you are like, so underwhelmed and everyone else is having a great time with this person and you're a bit like I don't really see it mm. and then maybe I sort of like exaggerated that so like thinking about how um, what if then yeah he starts to take away 
uh, your friends and yeah, like because um, I think the character of Josh is quite you know like reclusive and anyway, not reclusive but like just quite uh, low key anyway. So like having like someone take away his like group of friends is also or, like that's that the slight threat of it is really like um, damaging for him. Mm. So I, I kind of like played on that really. The scene in where you turn round and he's like just doing this dance routine oh, oh yeah. with all the guys. <laughs> um, again, you know, like where on earth did that come from? Um, yeah, the idea w was like he's kind of infiltrated everything. Yep. And I don't know if, if you noticed, but e people were drinking pink cocktails. Yep. And we even gave that a name as the Tobster. Right. Um, I don't know if, if it made it in the final. We had it on like a um, in the pub. We had it on the on the uh, blackboard, the toast of the new cocktail, and then yeah, and then we were just thinking of ideas of different ways of him dominating the scene, and yeah, he just came up with the dance. Yeah. yeah. So there were several things in in Lee's original script at that party that needed to happen. I think like then there was there was a joke that someone else tells uh, yeah. that you're not privy to. Um, and uh, and also like the kind of pouring the drinks uh, and, and and one of the other th well the third thing was the dance sequence. Yep. So when we were actually filming that dance sequence, um, we didn't have anything particularly scripted, and we kind of left it up to the actor playing Toby, yep. Tim Jap. We left it up to him to come up with what the dance would be, but he had absolutely no prior preparation at all. Right. Um, and I think that this that weird wriggle that he does with his knees, <laughs> this kind of, this, I don't know, like he's a weird spring or like a stalk of a plant being twisted. I don't quite know what it is. But um, yeah, that's, that's kind of what, what we got to. But we filmed about... 20 minutes worth of dancing yep. and different dances with Toby yep. and I was just standing behind the ca camera just going change change and just seeing what he did so Toby was leading that dance quite organically what are your plans now what's next for you guys um so we have a film in post production at the moment um that we shot just a couple of months ago uh, a horror short um it is currently untitled yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. It is currently untitled. That's like um, a really suspicious currently untitled. It, it is very suspicious, uh, but we wanted to try something in the horror genre because I think both of our comedy sense is quite dark and spills into that a little bit. Um, so we wanted to do something within that genre. Okay. And how about with your acting head on? Have you got anything in the pipeline externally? Um, not at the moment, no. I mean, I'd really like to. I'm, you know, just eager to do as much as possible at the moment. But no. So this, the, the horror short is, um, is just me. Okay. Um, and then we've got a couple of ideas that are um, sort of half written yep. that we want to. Uh, we basically need to choose which one we want to go with. Um, finish writing it and then um, do that. But like in the meantime, while we're doing that, I, I'd, I'd be happy to, you know be in anything else to be honest just because I'm looking for as much practice as possible yep. and because it's just so much fun and yeah it's what I really want to do so when it comes to the world of film and this is to both of you uh, who inspires you it sounds quite cliche I think I'm a big fan of Al Pacino like one of my favorite films is Godfather 2 and just every time I watch that like yeah you can just see it's just um, just genuine emotion um, I know he's not <laughs> um, particularly a, a great, no, regarded as a great human being, but as an actor, I, I was a big fan of Kelsey Grammer, just because um, I know he plays the same character yep. at, at the same time, but when he has like an emotion, like being baffled or being startled, it, it just, you can't, it's very different to watching that, just like someone who, where it doesn't seem genuine. So yeah, I'd say Al Pacino. And Ash? Um, so I've definitely got, the big one for me is David Lynch. Um, I'm a very, very big fan of that sort of very, very, alienating uh, tone that he's able to establish. And I think, yeah, if anyone's able to juggle comedy and horror and just surprising images and just the strength of an image being that much, I, I have a lot of respect for just where that man's psyche goes. Um, also, big fan of people uh, like Peter Greenaway, for example, yeah. The Cook, The Thief, His Wife and Her yep. Lover's a big influence Amazing on me. Amazing film. Strong visual sense, yep. lots of colour, even though, you know, I, I don't actually have that much visual flair. I'm not 
going to be a, a DOP yep. or a graphic designer or anything like it. It's just, uh, but it's that kind of thing where we where we start to leech into symbolism yep. and and that and that kind of thing. And also, um, r- weirdly, Nicholas Winding Refn, yep. um, Valhalla Rising was weirdly the film that made me want to become a filmmaker. And I didn't okay. even like it that much, but right, it's okay. just you look at it and you go you would struggle to see a stronger authorial thumbprint on a film. Yep. That man made the film he wanted to make. <laughs> so, yeah. It's funny, when you were talking earlier about how originally Toby had no head, the first thing that came into my ma- mind was Twin Peaks and uh, the, uh, the, the, the in the recent series, uh, the characters in uh, the, uh, the, the, the Black Lodge yeah, uh, when with without their head, so it's quite interesting that you 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 flip onto David Lynch there. So personally, I saw Toby as a film about belonging. Um, what what is Toby? <laughs> what is Toby? He's a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> Not a big fan. <laughs> no, <laughs> not a big fan no, of Toby. Yeah. <laughs> you look like you had so much fun with him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think that, that that's one of the things that we have heard from people and feedback from our screenings so far um, that there isn't really a definite article with Toby. He kind of people will go and go like, oh, well, what was that all about? Like, oh, I think this is about X, Y, and Z. We had someone come up at Brighton and say that they thought it was about xenophobia and racism, right, uh, okay. which is quite interesting. Like this idea. So basically, that would mean your character was a massive racist, I guess, <laughs> in that in that interpretation. <laughs> Fantastic. Not written. When you're when you're writing something, when like when Lee had the idea, I think he just. I, I don't know. You probably know more than me, but the way I looked at it is he wrote the story he wanted to write, and then any meanings thereof would just sort of fall out into place whatever people want it to be um and i certainly find that's true when we're writing things like the, we weren't like looking for a message but like once we had the story we kind of you know realize what message you want it to be basically and what toby toby is and can people relate not to toby specifically but to that situation basically and their own interpretation yeah. um, but like all of these things like obviously uh, Tim uh, Jap, who played Toby, uh, needs a you know, had to have something in his head that he was going for uh, yeah. direction-wise, and actually he was kind of he was playing Toby as like this kind of organic creature, almost like a moss or a mold in his mm. head. So it was almost like he was just this contagion yep. that was seeping out, uh, and sort of you know this like gnarled thing that lives under yep. the ground and like creeps out and actually uh, the, the top book that is visible on your desk in the office is called Contagious right, <laughs> okay. uh, just Very in terms nice. of set dressing <laughs> Very nice. yeah, yeah I mean I touched on the eagle earlier uh, I just love the, the, the fact that you've got this amazing swanky looking office and this like stuffed eagle sat on the on the back of this like fancy backdrop where do where did the eagle come from well we had a lot of fun that was um, even though it's quite a um, Compared to like the rest of the film, it was quite a low-key scene. That was one of the funnest days filming because we had to, we kept coming up with ideas for what m- my job was and f- you know what what was I interviewing for. So the guy I'm interviewing at the beginning, we did the whole interview, um, yeah. and that was really fun. And um, Lee is a graphic designer, so he designed the logo. Um, it was in pink, of course, and um, I I don't remember that where the the eagle came in but there's there's definitely there's a mug that we use that is also in yep. piggies which yep. has a, a dog on it yep. but do you remember do you remember the eagle where that came from yeah. uh, well so what emerged when we were uh, so there's some very very quiet b-roll conversation going on in the office at the beginning and i think it evolved quite organically out of that when we were like well what is the office that you work for where is it and we started riffing uh, about bird seed uh, and so we, yeah, so we decided that it was a bird seed company. Lee very quickly did off a logo with this pink bird, Watkins Bird Seed. Uh, and then we have this eagle in the office. So the office that we use is where Lee and I work. Uh, and the eagle is in there. Uh, I think we got it as a present when we opened an American office. So it is like, a, you know, that, that the bald eagle representing the US kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, when it was a bird seed company, we were like, right, throw everything in that has anything to do with avian <laughs> stuff. Uh, what is next for Toby, as in Toby the character? Has he got legs um, in the <laughs> sense that he can go on and have other sort of... Uh, uh, adventures, so to speak. Right and, there. and as as for Toby as a character, I mean, one of the things that we wanted to do with Toby is to create something of TV length mm-hmm. and see whether this could potentially be a pilot. You know, I think that potential is there. We have we have joked about the fact that you know where where do you go next 
yeah. after the ending of the film, which I won't give away, but basically it, it might mean that this uh, second episode would be very experimental yep. or very strange. We're also open to that. Yeah, <laughs> excellent. No, exactly. So no, yes, do give us a give us a follow on Professor Stamen and uh, keep in touch. Towards the end of the year, we'll have it out online. Okay. I think as well, like uh, a possibility uh, that I would think of is if because of the ending, you could just have the character Toby in a different setting, and uh, but that then that could take another different direction. Also, slightly experimental, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, both of you guys have uh, really struck gold with this, and I think. Um, we're going to see and hear a lot more from you guys and uh, just to let you know the countdown is now on because we're expecting to see your next film here okay. next May um, okay. thank you ever so much for bringing Toby to Romford and we wish you all the very best in the future thank you very much yeah thank you very much